Hello, welcome to Health Hint YouTube channel. This channel is dedicated to answering important health questions and providing tips that will also keep you healthy. So please subscribe to this channel and stay tuned. We will constantly upload important information regarding health and you will benefit immensely from those, pu those publications. So today we are going to be looking at a disease condition known as Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. The name sounds strange, but it is a common condition, though it is not, a lot of people do not know so much about it. But Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever is a thick bone viral disease that causes severe hemorrhagic fever outbreak. And this disease also has the potential of becoming an epidemic. It is not an epidemic yet, but it is shown to be distributed in different parts of the world. So Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever was first discovered in 1944 by a Soviet scientist. It was first described in Congo in 1956 as Congo hemorrhagic fever by Gislen Cordis, a physician. In 1969, it was renamed as Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever because the viral strain that caused Congo fever was identical to that that caused Crimean fever in 1944. So what is the distribution of the disease? Where can you find this disease? Now, the first thing I want to mention here is that there is what is called disease vector. And what is disease vector? According to Wikipedia, disease vector is any living thing, any living agent that carries and transmits an infect infectious pathogen, an infectious organism to another living organism. That is known as disease vector. So in Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, Tick, a particular type of tick known as hyaloma tick, is responsible for carrying the virus that causes Congo, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. So wherever you find these ticks, the disease will be found in locations where these ticks, acting as a vector, are found. So the disease distribution is in locations where the virus is found, and it has been observed in the North Africa, in Middle East, in Asia, in Southern and Eastern Europe. Now, this is a picture of what hyaloma, which carries the virus that crosses Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, looks like. Now, what is the case fatality rate? What is fatality rate? Now, when people suffer this disease, what is the percentage people uh, that, that die of this disease condition? According to World Health Organization, the case fatality rate is between 10 to 40 percent. In other words, it means that about 10 to 40 percent of those that suffer Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever die of the disease. Now, what is the transmission? How is this virus transmitted? How do people get infected? Now remember that tick, the tick, hyaloma, is, is the carrier of the virus that causes Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. So the easiest way of transmission is by tick bite. Maybe tick bite and human, or tick bite an animal, or a human is beaten by a tick, such a person can come down with Crimean Congo. If it carries, if actually the tick carries the virus, such a person will come down with Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Now, another means of transmission of this disease is by contact with viral contaminated animal tissues. If the animal tissue, for instance, you are handling meat, and the meat, the animal was infected with this virus, now, if you contact, have contact with a viral contaminated animal tissue, you can get infected 
you can get sick with Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Now, another means of transmission is human to human transmission. And this is through contact with blood, contact with body secretions, or contact with organs of the body, or you come in contact with any body fluid of an infected person can come down with Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Now, impo more importantly, what are the signs and symptoms of Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever? What features would you see? How would you feel? And you will think you would, it, it would suggest to you that probably you are suffering from a disease like this. So the first thing is that sudden onset of fever, muscle aches, you feel dizzy, or maybe there is neck pain and stiffness of the neck, maybe headaches, back aches, sore eyes, and you may also have photophobia, or your eyes become very sensitive to light. Or maybe you have nausea, you feel like vomiting, or maybe you are actually vomiting, or you have diarrhea, or you have abdominal pains, or sore throat. These are symptoms of Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Now, there are other signs that may ensue, like mood swing and confusion. Maybe you feel so sleepy and depression, or your heartbeat begins to beat faster than normal. Or you have what is known as lymph adenopathy. What it simply means is that you have enlarged lymph nodes. For instance, if you put your hand under your armpit, and there are, there are two lymph nodes, there are lymph nodes under your armpit. If they, be, if they are swollen and maybe slightly painful, it could be a sign that there is a kind of viral infection. Or maybe you put your hand below your ears. There is a lymph node below your ear. If it is swollen or bigger than normal, it means there's probably an infection. Or maybe you put your hand near your groin area and there are lymph nodes, inguinal lymph nodes at that point, and it is bigger than normal, maybe painful, swollen, or warm at that point, it could be a sign that you have a viral infection. So what are the preventive measures to take to avoid the, being sick with Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. The best way, one of the best, the best way to prevent this disease is to prevent thick bite. You, and you do that by wearing protective clothing. Or maybe you can also use what is known as acaricides. Acaricides are chemicals that are used to control vectors. You can use those chemicals to make sure that the thick does not exist in your environment. And if the things do not exist, they cannot carry the virus. And if they do not carry the virus, you cannot get sick with the disease. So, what, and now control thick infestation. When you control the thick infestation, you also automatically prevent the occurrence of the virus and possible infection with the virus. So another way is by wearing protective clothing while handling animals. While handling animals, wear clothing that protect yourself, protect your hands. You can wear hand gloves, you can cover yourself with overall, and then that will protect you from also getting contact with the virus. Now, also avoid physical contact with infected persons. Avoid physical contact with infected persons. And this is how you can stay safe. And then also observe basic hygiene measures and then you may not get infected with the disease. Now, how is this condition treated? There is no vaccine. I want to first mention that there is no vaccine for Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Only supportive therapy can be given. And so symptoms can only be effectively managed by suitable medical personnel. So if you have any of the symptoms, please report to a physician and you will be quickly attended to. So in case of any of the above stated signs and symptoms, please contact a physician and they will attend to you and you will stay healthy and safe. Thank you so much for listening to us today. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you because of your time. Please subscribe to this channel and stay tuned to further information 
concerning Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. The next episode will spare more attention to the cases that have so far been reported about Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. And as you subscribe, you'll be the first to be informed about our new upload. Thank you so much for listening and stay blessed. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.